Okay, back again. Um, I haven't found the book yet, but uh, we'll uh, we'll work through it here. Uh, so we're on page I don't know whatever it said sixty nine or something like that sixty seven, whatever it says in the no in the notes. Um, he says uh, so. Tell me then. He's talking to Jabir, I think. Um, so tell me then. Uh, he said, throwing me a glance of in interested inquiry. What do you know on the subject of? Brr. He used a word I had not heard before. I must have looked puzzled, for he gave an incredulous gasp and said, You mean you've never heard of? And he said it again. I shook my head, and he sank back into the chair, knocking his head with his fist, nearly dis dislodging his white skullcap. Ya yeah, Amitab, he said in mock despair. What are you going to do in life if you don't know about that? About what? I said. This only made him laugh. If you don't know that, if you don't know what you don't know, uh, he muttered mysteriously. Don't know about what, I said in exasperation. It's not important, he said, grinning, elliptical. It's good to put distance between your thoughts and things like that. But tell me this. Of course, you have circumcision where you come from, just like we do. Isn't that so, Mushkida? I had been, long been dreading this line of questioning, know exactly where it would lead. Some people do, he said, and some people don't. You mean, he said, in rising disbelief, there are people in your country who are not circumcised? In Arabic, the word circumcise derives from a root that means to purify. To say of someone that they are uncircumcised is more or less to call them impure. Yes, I answered, yes. Many people in my country are impure. I had no alternative. I was trapped by language. But not you, he could not bring himself to finish the sentence. Yes, I said. My face was hot with embarrassment. My throat had gone dry. Yes, me too. He gasped, and his incredulous eyes skimmed over the front of my trousers. For a moment he stared in disbelieving curiosity, and then, in a, with an effort, he said, And when you go to the barber to have your hair cut, do you not shave your armpits like we do? No, I said. He leant forward, frowning intently. So tell me then, he said, pointing a finger at my crotch. Don't you shave there, either? No, I said. But then, he cried, doesn't the hair grow longer and longer until... Inadvertently, his eyes dropped, and he stole a quick look at my ankles. I am convinced to this day that he fully expected to see the ends of two long curly braids peeping out from the ends of my trousers. So as we can see here, uh, he is uh, trapped by language, right? Um, I, I am trapped by language. Page 62. What does this mean? And if you were here, I would ask you, but you're not here, so uh, just think about it for a while. What does it mean to be trapped by language? It means that even if you speak the language, you still can't say exactly what you're thinking because the language requires you uh, to, to change the way you think in order to communicate in that language. There are some things that cannot be expressed. Uh, so it's important to remember that as we go through life, even if we speak the same language as the other people, um, we don't necessarily, uh, we're unable to uh, fully express ourselves as we see uh, that we should be. Um, saints and festivals, very holy people or great religious leaders have been given baraka. This is blessing by God. They can pass on that blessing to others. And even after they die, the baraka remains in and around the area where they are buried. It's sort of part of their body. It's like a substance. And this is very common in North Africa um, and the Middle East. Uh, it's sort of, sort of uh, connected to the, the pan-Mediterranean sort of saint cults, uh, you know, in Catholicism as well. Um, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not something um, that is uh, culturally any different from anywhere else in the Mediterranean, whether Catholic or Muslim. Um, and it extends through Islam. It extends out uh, into you know, Pakistan and Southeast Asia. Um, the, the, uh, after they die, the baraka remains in and around the area where they are buried, and so they call that mausoleum shrine maqam. Uh, the, uh, a little, usually it has a little white dome. It's a little building. Uh, and you see them sort of dotting the countryside in, in North Africa. The Maulid is the saint's birthday when a festival is held. It's basically a country fair. Um, Indian technology, the Makana Hindi is an Indian machine, Makana machine, a water pump. This one happens to be a water pump. Ghosh gains authority because he comes from where they make water pumps. What does Ghosh mean when he states this? I wonder where I would have, this is page 74, I wonder where I would have stood in Jabir's eyes if mine had been a country that exported machines that were even bigger, better, and more impressive, cars and tractors perhaps, not to speak of ships, planes, and tanks, I began to wonder how Latifa would have looked if I had had the, the privilege of floating through it 
protected by the delegated power of technology of looking out untroubled through a sheet of clear glass. Uh, so what's he talking about here? I'm going to uh, pause because it's five minutes, and then we'll come back uh, and answer that question.